Uh, thank you. Uh, one of the most significant events in the last presidential campaign, of course, was the dump of emails stolen from the Democratic National Committee, dumped by WikiLeaks. Uh, Mr. Cohen, during your opening statement, uh, which was at, at the height of the election, you testified you were actually meeting with Donald Trump in July 2016, when Roger Stone happened to call and tell Mr. Trump that he had just spoken to Julian Assange. Is that correct? That is correct. All right. And you said that Mr. Assange told Mr. Trump about an upcoming, quoting your opening statement, quote, massive dump of emails that would damage Hillary Clinton's campaign. Wow. So I want to ask you about Roger Stone's phone call to the President. First of all, was that on speakerphone, is that what you indicated? Yes. So Mr. Trump has a black speakerphone that sits on his desk. Right. Um, he uses it quite often because with all the number of phone calls he gets. Right. Now, in January of this year, 2019, the New York Times asked President Trump if he ever spoke to Roger Stone about these stolen emails, and President Trump answered, and I quote, no, I didn't. I never did. Was that statement by President Trump true? No, it's not accurate. And can you please describe for us, to the best of your recollection, you were present, exactly what Mr. Stone said to Mr. Trump? It was a short conversation, and he said, Mr. Trump, I just want to let you know that I just got off the phone with Julian Assange, and in a couple of days, there's going to be a massive dump of emails that's going to severely hurt the Clinton campaign. And was Mr. Trump and Mr. Stone aware of where those emails came from? That I'm not aware of. Did Mr. Trump ever suggest then or later to call the FBI to report this breach? He never expressed that to me. Uh, did the President at that time or ever since, in your knowledge, uh, indicate an awareness that this conduct was wrong? No. The reason I ask is because on July 22nd, on the eve of the Democratic Convention, WikiLeaks published, as you know, the 20,000 uh, leaked internal DNC emails. Could your uh, meeting with Mr. Trump have been before that date? Yes. So Mr. Trump was aware of the upcoming dump before it actually happened? Yes. Right. And is there any record? No, sir, I don't know whether he knew or not, and I don't believe he did what the sum and substance of the dump was going to be, only that there was going to be a dump of emails. And he was aware of that before the dump occurred, correct? Yes, sir. All right. And are there any records that would corroborate the day of this meeting, calendars perhaps? I'm not in possession, but I believe, again, this is part of the special counsel, and they and probably best suited to um, corroborate that information. Was anyone else present uh, in the room during the call? I don't recall for this one, no, sir. Is there anyone else the committee should talk to about the President's knowledge of the, the WikiLeaks email dump? Well, um, again, when he called, uh, Rona Graf uh, yelled out to Mr. Trump, Rogers on line one, which was regular practice. And that's his assistant? That's his, yes. All right. And during a news conference on July 27th, 2016, then candidate Trump public, publicly appealed uh, to Russia to hack Hillary Clinton's emails and make them public. He stated, and I quote, Russia, if you're listening, I hope you're able to find the 30,000 emails that are missing. Now, going back to Mr. Stone's phone call to the President, do you recall if Mr. Trump had knowledge of the WikiLeaks dump at the time of his direct appeal to Russia? I, I am not. But the call with Mr. Stone, you believe, was before yes. this 27th? Yes. I'm, I'm sorry. If you're t I, I thought you were talking about a different set of um, documents that got dumped. So I was in Mr. Trump's office. It was either July 18th or 19th. And yes, he went ahead. I don't know if the 35,000 or 30,000 emails was what he was referring to, okay. but he certainly had knowledge. All right. Thank you. Just yes, one sir. last question. Uh, Mr. Raskin had been asking you some questions, and one of the things in your answer was that Mr. Pecker uh, expended other monies to protect uh, Mr. Trump. Can you elaborate on what some of those other activities were? Sure. There was the story about Mr. Trump having 
uh, a love child with an employee, um, with, with an employee, and actually the husband of that employee works for the company as well. And there was a elevator operator who claims that he overheard the conversation taking place between uh, one of Mr. Trump's other executives and somebody, and he ended up paying like fifteen thousand dollars in order to buy that story to find out whether it was true or not. And that's just one example of things that David had done over the years. It was the reason why in the recording, when David was looking to become the CEO of Time magazine, we were concerned about, we'll call it the treasure trove of documents that had been created over the years, that if he left, somebody could open up the key to a drawer and find all this information. So we were going to look to buy all of those life rights and so on. The gentleman standing expired, Mr. Norman. 